start doing meat, but I was a footballer. Okay. By because of something, so I drove. So I was doing meat for the main time. Draw, draw, draw meat. Okay, but presently, as we speak, what do you do for a living? Nothing. I just do home. So you're unemployed. Yes. I was a footballer, but they said I was in taxes, so I can't compete with the women side. Um, who told you that? They called me for the national team, so they dropped me because of I was in taxes. Um, what's your name? Ativa Holali. Do you feel sick? No, sometimes I feel sad. Okay, so you feel sad? Yeah. Why do you feel sad? Because I am, I'm different from others. When a baby is born, there's a common question. Is it a boy or a girl? But whoever wonders, what if it's neither? Holali just wants to play ball. She considers herself a woman. However, the stakeholders of football do not think so. And so in 2019, when her big break came, she lost her chance to play for the Black Queens after a medical exam came back unfavorable. She was declared intersex. Did you know about this before the medical exam? Yeah, I know. I was treating in even my, even my uh, national players, uh, like my team players um, or my team managers, coaches, even don't know anything about it. So I was treating it before they call me for the national team. Because if I don't go to the national team, my director will say, oh, or my coaches will be saying, oh, I, I do you something or I help you to go to national team, but you don't go. So I must go. I was treating in you know, confirmation before they called me for the national team. It was 2017 and I started before they called me for the 2019. So I went and they checked and uh, they, they, like, they dropped me because of I was in taxes. At home, I don't have with anyone. So me, I know it is normal. So the time I, I, like, I went to Kumasi Sports Academy and I bathed with one lady and I found out, no, mine is different from there. But before that, your f mother or father didn't talk to you about it? From, that, from the day I saw that, I went home and I asked them, why in this? And, and I showed and I show my mother, why? And I called my, like, my junior sister and I said, why mine is different from her? Uh, the way he was, she was performing at the league, that was the, is it NC, the NC tournament, yeah, he was performing, she was performing character mm. there. So she was called to, uh, I think that time, Black Queen, for the uh, physical examination. Okay, so they did a physical examination also? That was what happened. Oh. Uh-huh. And then saw that, I saw that, and then uh, they told the coach. That is what is happening to the lady. Do you report to the GFA or is it, I mean, the doctor is from who? Who assigns the doctor that does all these tests? It's a GFA team doctor. I mean, I'm not going to say that 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 I'm not going a bad sense in the piano, your head, you cut out at the so call. Not that you know, the same thing happened. And the doctor looked something and they wanted to find out why he, he was overly addicted. Was overly addicted. In simple language, we can say people who do not conform to the traditional classification of what a male or female will connote. So they look a bit different or atypical. However, um, in medical language, we usually would prefer disorders of sexual development or differentiation. And under such classification, we put quite a number of groups. That's a spectrum on its own of um, people with different or we say atypical presentation of their uh, genital organ. They, they do not fall within the generally classified 
male or female patterns. Any variation out of it will fall within this spectrum that we call um, disorders of sexual differentiation. Or other organizations then will prefer terms like intersex. Intersex people are individuals born with any of several variations in sex characteristics including chromosomes, gonads, sex hormones or genitals that according to the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights do not fit the typical definitions for male or female. Experts say 1.7% of the population worldwide is born with intersex traits. Holali has been advised by some doctors and football agents to undergo surgery in order to qualify to play as a woman. At what age was it? How old were you by this time? Oh, I'm 21. The time you found out? How the old time I found out, I was uh, 15 years. But before that, your mother or father didn't talk to you about it? Talk to, to them by that time. They don't have money. And I don't have anyone, apart from my parents. I don't have any, anyone. Because my family people, they don't like me like that. So, apart from my father and my mother, I don't have anyone again. It's a, it's a lot of uh, our program. I get some, uh, uh, like, a madam, she took me as I'm a doctor in Kumasi. So she took me to a conformity. For that, the, the price they said they would take. I told my mother, even my mother was crying because of the, the amount. How much did they say they would it's take? It's almost 500 million. When you say 500 million, how much like, is that? 50,000? Yeah, 50,000. 50,000 Ghana cities. Yeah, in New current. But it spots enough reason to put a well-functioning human through supposed corrective surgery. The right guidance is to be able to know what exact problem we're facing. Because if, you know, generally we talk about um, the biological sex, we talk about the, the social sex, and then we have what would be like the gender identity. And these are, are quite different things and, and they go mix. So uh, in as much as we say the biological has been determined and that's what we see. But when it comes to the gender one, it, it starts in prenatal life and develops further in the early postnatal period. And then with interaction with society, one consolidates the gender uh, identity. So um, the right decision here will mean when the person is able to align all these factors on one particular uh, gradient or line. So to do that, then you should understand what makeup you have. Annette Nagesa, a Ugandan ex-athlete, was faced with a similar situation and she did succumb to surgery. The result, she has never returned to competitive sport at the highest level since. For me, I can't advise her to go for a start to do surgery on her body. Because there is no need of changing the body. Yeah. Because now, if she goes for surgery, because I have an experience on that, and I did the same too for seven years now. I haven't been competing as they feel the need that they are be back in, in shape of competing in the sport. That's something like a killing her, her, her talent and uh, killing her dream. I got some complications which I even they didn't tell me at first that you will get some if I did it after this. First of all, I was to the best. Uh, well, like uh, I got some complication of big getting headache all the time, yeah, because the body was just coping up in another new life, which was really not mine, yeah. Really, I can't support her to do that. She also had to flee Uganda after her surgery as her life was in danger due to intolerance towards LGBTQ+. Most athletes who succumb to surgery end up with complications and lifelong dependence on hormonal therapy. What we want is that we we'll rather make the diagnosis as early as possible. Then we begin to then see as the individual develops further, 
then we understand the individual's um, psychological state, the social gender, and if surgery becomes something that will come in to complement, especially around puberty or getting to that area, then that could be considered rather than probably the parents deciding that early now because there are quite a number of variations. Things that happens after the surgery is there is no, uh, you need hormone therapy for a whole life. And often federations or the doctors who are conducting this don't, don't give you that information. For example, Annette wasn't told that she will, even if uh, the surgery is done, still hormone therapy is required for all your life. That was not told. For seven years, there were no hormone therapy, which can have huge impact on your bone health. Um, so nobody told that. Uh, in Annette's case and uh, it's only last year after uh, talking about it after coming to Germany that uh, Annette started uh, the hormone therapy so you know this information is also extremely important that one surgery one the surgery is irreversible it's an irreversible surgery so you're doing it for sport doesn't mean you can change again later on so it's irreversible surgery. It has a lot of ill effects. It stops production of estrogen as well in your body, which is so key to your bone health. So you need to replace, hormone replacement is required throughout your life. The only reason Miss Ativo has considered surgery is her love for soccer. In case of Kulali, I would say that, you know, the fact that she feels that she needs to do a surgery because she wants to compete in sport and that's what uh, the national camp coach and doctor told her without any specific documentation though it's just an oral uh, instruction that has been given to her i think that is unfortunate even um, the fifa regulations it doesn't talk about any kind of surgery or anything uh, if you think about the athletics federation the world athletics is um, you know, uh, re current regulations, the DSG regulations, which uh, was what Castro Semenya had challenged, even that regulations gives different options of medical steps. I am not in support of taking any kind of medical steps, but the fact that Atigor Hulali was not even given all the options, she was just told go do a surgery and only then you can compete. That's really not the full information that you are given. And you are putting her in that spot where she feels compelled to do a surgery. No one should feel that I need to do a surgery, change my body in a certain way just because I want to compete in sport. I asked Atevo several times that do you really want to do the surgery if, you, if, if it was not about sport? If you were allowed to play sport without doing this surgery, would you still do this surgery? She said no. I won't. So that tells you that she's feeling compelled, forced, coerced to do this surgery. And that is not fair. Sport must accommodate uh, all these athletes because these athletes are born the way they are. What makes Holali's situation even more isolated is that other intersex persons in the Ghanaian society hide away due to public misunderstanding and stigma. However, there are intersex communities in Ghana that provide support to hundreds of members. Key Watch Ghana is one of such communities where Adam Sean Ejay is executive director. Our first form of support is to provide a voice, provide a space, a safe space to express itself. Is to provide a listening ear, is to provide that you listen to know that I am not alone. Yes, and also to Demystify the whole condition as being a freak or a mistake of nature or a scientific error. Yes, so many persons are in many of the variations and do not understand where they are, where they are so. And many of our community members are chasing surgeries, chasing hormonal uh, treatments and therapies, and they are not be having access to all the features. So what we do is that we provide our members with the basic information, understanding who they are, where to go for uh, getting uh, the various labs to do to identify which of the conditions you belong to, 
and how to handle your condition and, and all that. Yes, because the support you are doing. Uh, the intersex community is being lumped into the whole LGBTI community and being tagged as a devilish evil community. And nobody takes time to understand that there's a biological factor for the fellows. Many of our community members are chasing surgeries, chasing hormonal uh, treatments and therapies, and they are not be having access to all the pictures. So what we do is that we provide our members with the basic information. Why do you want to do the surgery? So because of the football, they said, if I'm able to do the surgery, I'll be able to play the national team. That's the reason why they dropped me from the national team. If you weren't a footballer, would you still do the surgery? No. Why? <laughs> because, because of the football, that's why I wanted to do the surgery. So if I get any job or any opportunity somewhere, I'm okay. What qualifications do you have? Have you been to school? No. Why? I, I just complete GHS. SS because of if I go here, like many people will be saying, hey, you are a guy, you are a lady, you are a guy. So if I'm even going to bow, some can uh, like uh, uh, say, hey, I've seen something. So a lot of things. So I only mean I can't almost, uh, I can say, see senior high school. So I, I, I stopped school. So, Did you even try to go? Yeah, I, yeah, I tried. Let me see. I tried. Uh, I went to form two, SS2 before I stopped. What school was this? Oh, my school's for how many? Because of that, because of how many that said they are saying this and this, that's why I stopped school. When you say people are saying this and this, people are saying, eh, hey, she's a girl, she's a boy. And I'm so, oh, you got, even, even the headmaster too, sometime, I mean, uh, like I went to some school, uh, like some school, like uh, Supercast, Kumasi Agrikan, even the, the house, ma, ma, like, master, uh, mattress over there, even saying that eh, she's not a girl. So that gave me hopeless to stop the school. Have you ever met anyone who is the same? No. Do you have friends who know about this? Yeah. What's their reaction? She always, uh, if I'm sad, she always come to me and give me some hope, advice that will make me happy, small. Now you're 21. Yeah. Have you ever tried to have a relationship? Have you ever tried to have a lover? How did that go? No, I never. Why? Because I don't, because I don't feel I'm in that sense, so I can't, I like, don't feel, even feel like doing that. So what do World Athletics Regulations say about women in athletics? In April 2011, the International Olympic Committee, IOC, and the International Association of Athletics Federations, IAAF, issued statements following meetings between the two. The IAAF issued a new policy for male to female transgender athletes and a second policy on the eligibility of females with hyperandrogenism to compete in women's competition. The 2011 IAAF hyperandrogenism policy stated that these regulations replace the IAAF's previous gender verification policy and the IAAF has now abandoned all reference to the terminology gender verification and gender policy in its rules. The policy mentioned a three-step process. The first, a physical examination including clinical signs of virilization, which means physical appearance, deepness of voice, body hair, etc. Genital characteristics and the second, a hormone test principally the androgenic sex steroids, but also possibly other hormones. And the final stage, a full genetic test. An athlete would be considered eligible to compete if her testosterone levels were within the required range, or if she could prove that she has an androgen resistance such that she derives no competitive advantage. A non-exhaustive list of conditions said to cause 
hyperandrogenism was provided. It's it's really a problem with the international body because what national governing bodies do is kind of follow blindly what the international regulations are saying. But at the same time, what we need to understand here that nationally, uh, every case is treated differently. And when you leave a lot of scope for the National Federation or the national doctors to do uh, or intervene, uh, that creates another problem. For the FIFA regulations that we still have existing, puts the onus on the National Federation. And that leaves scope for further discrimination uh, within different countries. So there is no set rule and whoever wants to deal with this in whatever way, they do it. I oppose these regulations because I completely believe that these women are born the way they are. They have not cheated, they have not doped. Uh, so why are you forcing them to take medical steps to change their body in order to simply compete in sports? That, that's absolutely unfair. Most countries apply these rules as they deem fit. The Ghana Football Association did not respond to inquiries on this subject. In a similar situation, Casta Semenya lost her appeal against track and field's rules that put a limit on a female runner's natural testosterone levels. From Confanochi, I went to uh, Lifestyle perform Health Clinic. And after that, I went to uh, a Roma, Roma facility. And they gave me a lot. I take a lot of drugs. Did they tell you what this treatment was supposed to do? Yeah. What was the treatment supposed to do? Now, when he started giving you medication, what did he say you are treating? What were you trying to achieve with the medication? Well, the doctor said, like, after I did the medicine, I would develop the place and I would get a period. Mm -hmm. And he said, how long do you have to take it before that will happen? And each time if I go, he asked me, and they started, I said, no. So he was continuing to give me. The more he was giving me, I was playing. Mm. So I moved from the hospital to another one, the same thing, and I stopped. And I tell my mother that she stopped. Uh, did you notice any changes when you started taking the medication? No. Nothing changed. No. Nothing changed. Have you ever thought about just accepting yourself the way you are? Has that ever crossed your mind? Yeah. Since this interview and through the help of an international organization, Holali has returned to club level football. She hopes for the day she will be allowed to be part of the national team without having to take any medical steps.